Okay, so here's my um, tutorial for John Locke, who is one of the five political thinkers for the political ideas section of the uh, AQA politics paper. So John Locke um, is a 17th century political philosopher obsessed with the idea of uh, legitimacy. He, he wrote numerous works. One, one's the first treatise on government. One's the um, uh, about tolerating other people's views. It's focused on religion. The the most famous work there is the two treatises on government, which is written in 1688. So throughout the uh, throughout the talk. Well, less. I want you to keep this uh, HOA pa past paper question in mind. This is from 2018. Explain and analyse three ways that liberal thinkers have viewed state intervention. So just keep that in mind as we go through the uh, as, as we go through the lesson. So Locke in, in the second in the first treatise on government asked if divine right was legitimate. So divine right is the idea that, that God chooses uh, a monarch or a king. And, and they have a, a, a sort of a, a right based from based from God. Locke argued argued against this in the first treatise of governments, and he was particularly interested in this idea because of his background. So he went to Westminster School, which is this picture here on the right, um, and from his classroom he heard Charles I be executed um, just outside uh, Westminster Abbey, which is the building um, behind the school um, up here on the. On, on the right, and then also the picture on the left shows the actual actual execution, and this this created a, a real interest and passion in the concept of legitimacy. He, he wanted to ask why government was legitimate, um, and he, he came up with with a theory based off a, a few notions. One's the state of nature, um, and it's the starting point. So Locke believed that before there was a ruler. Uh, everyone lived in a, a circumstance, an environment called the state of nature, and this this uh, is not too bad, but it's 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 quite insecure. Um, people can attack each other. There's no formal government. Um, there's not that many sort of. Th there's no products to, to eat. Getting food is hard. Getting water is hard. It's not a nice environment. Um, it's it's governed really by by laws, and there's 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 two principal laws. Um, and what these are that all people are naturally free and equal. If their freedom or equality is threatened, they have the right, a uh, lot goes further, he says, and duty to enforce the law of nature. So, so the, the, these, are their, these are their principal rights within this state of nature, that you can do basically anything um, as long as it doesn't contradict with someone's uh, freedom or equality. And if, if that person's equality and freedom are contradicted with, they have the, the moral responsibility of doing something about it. So an example is if, if person A steals from person B, person A should, but not only should, must punish person B. This this creates a really key problem, though, which, which Locke highlights. If you look at point number three, um, he highlights person A, number one, might not be able to punish person B, and number two, uh, they may punish them too much. So they might not be able to punish person B because person B is too big, uh, too strong, uh, or person B has a lot of people sort of with them. And then they may not be able to punish, um, they might punish person B too much because they're overly invested in the concept of getting justice. So the remedy for this, Locke says, is, is taking justice out of the hands of common people and putting it in the hands of a higher authority. In order to create that higher authority, we have to make something called a social contract. So a social contract, look at point number four, is people coming together, uh, forming a civil government that monopolizes all power and force and then it punishes people appropriately. So Locke believed that the people accept a ruler if and when a ruler better preserves their rights, which is freedom and equality. So if you look at this little flow chart I've got down here, this is what makes the government legitimate. So the people uh, give their power to the government. They do this so the government can protect the people's rights. If, however, the government misuses the power, the people have the right to replace or overthrow that government. 
a government is only legitimate only legitimate if it protects the rights of the people and the people should only give the powers to the government if it does this thing this is called the social contract the main two i'd say um rights that people have a freedom and equality but Locke also points out that people have the right to property and this is a really big central theme of, of Locke's work so um for lot this is what property is he believes that as all people are equal all natural objects of the world belong to everyone so so a tree might be a natural object to the world for example lock holds that property is whatever object someone has put their labor into so the example is a tree belongs to everyone because it's a natural object but the woods from a tree that someone has cut down belongs to that specific person because they put their labor into the wood the, or the tree and they've got these resources out those resources belong to them so Locke, however lock says this is a stipulation people should only have as much property as they need and not excessive amounts so you should only get as much property as you need um, and anything extra uh, isn't morally justified so if we're just going to have a little, little quick summary of what we've done already, if you remember the question, it's about what um, what grounds or what reasons might the state have for intervening. So we've already got one here. People should only have as much property as they need and not excessive amounts. So if people have too much property, the government should do something about this. An example would be taxation. Um, people making more money than, than others get taxed more. That's pretty common. And if we go up, So Locke believe that people accept a ruler if and when a ruler preserves their rights. So if we look at uh, number three as well, well for, rather number four, the social contract, people come together to protect the rights of freedom and equality. If these rights are, are gone against, the government has the opportunity or the right to punish the, the transgressors. So this punishment is... Um, this punishment would be state intervening. Uh, it'd be something like arresting someone like the police force. So again, that would be another answer you could include in, from, from the question. Now we start on, on number seven. So Locke believes, this is really a rather important part of Locke's, Locke's work, Locke believed that people, there should be a separation of powers in a government. This is what government should look like. Um, the separation of powers, there's three powers. There's the judiciary, and that's like a court system. So the Supreme Court, uh, the best way to think of it, by, by the way, is the United States of America. So they have the Supreme Court, so that's the, the, the highest level of the judiciary. They have the executive, which is the president um, and his cabinet. And then they also have the legislature, and the legislature is the, the Congress, so the houses of the set of uh, houses of um, uh, representatives and the Senate. The most important power for Locke is the legislature, and that's because it's where the will of the majority is kept. If you look at this picture here, um, we the people. This section here, this is the legislature. Um, the legislature uh, transfers powers to the executive and the judiciary, and the executive and the judiciary uh, checks and balances the legislature, which gives people security and the protection uh, that they that they need. Um, because of this, the will of the majority prevails, uh, and. There's a separation of powers to keep everyone checked and make sure no institution gets too powerful. The legislature can only um, make laws, however, that do not contradict the laws of nature. The laws of nature are life, liberty and property. And this is another really, really, really important um, concept for, for Locke. It highlights individualism, um, which, which is a central theme running throughout his work. He believes in the power of the individual. The Americans... When uh, writing the Bill of Rights, Thomas Jefferson read this and wrote this down as life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So going down, 
we have a uh, we have this past question here. Explain and analyze three ways that liberal thinkers have viewed state intervention. So again, you can find another answer from from number eight here. Uh, Locke believes state intervention shouldn't happen if it contradicts the laws of nature, so people's rights to life, liberty, and property. So in your answers, you should be including all of these words, or try to include as many as possible. Um, state of nature, law of nature, social contract, separation of powers, life, liberty, and property, legitimacy, and individualism. And then down here, uh, in short, there's there's the answers here um, that I've collated. Right, so that's my that's my lesson. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. Um, I look forward to hearing back from you. Thank you very much.